my dear students other viewers and listeners i professor manohar lal school of computer and information sciences indira gandhi national open university welcome you to this lecture on problem solving with computers friends this title itself raises a number of questions for example what is a problem of course we have been solving problems almost from the very first standard when we entered the school and then we continue this process up to the education we have however hardly we ever thought what is a problem at last next again we are solving a lot of problems we have been doing so again from the very beginning but again when we come to a sort of definition of what is meant by solution of a problem we are generally stuck so i'll try to explain briefly what is a problem what is a solution to a problem and further as the title is problem solving with the help of computers we'll see who actually solves the problem it is the man machine combination which solves the problem computer by itself is so far not capable of solving the problems that is it requires help of the human beings rather the solutions in the initial stages are embedded in the computer system by the human beings then we may ask that if it is so then what is the use of the problem then in the process a number of other questions also arise for example what is computer science and as we know every discipline has its major methodologies so the next question will be what is the main methodology what is the main techniques in computer science which are adopted or used to solve problems so with some of these questions and some of the questions which i'll enumerate later on let us start what is a problem friends problem is actually to the living beings only we can see from the next slide that despite the fact that galaxies are too big in size as compared to a train however when the two galaxies any two galaxies collide then in that case lot of energy lot of movement and lot of disturbances in the environment around them takes place you need not look at the slide please however still there is no problem as such but when two trains collide a number of lives may be affected and in the process there is a problem please don't look at the slide so in this process please don't look at the slide in this process you can see that the problems are with reference to the human beings or living beings well actually i don't require looking at the slide at all well in the process as i mentioned that when there are there is a very famous saying where there are problems there is life that is the sign of our living lies in the fact that there are problems which we are solving we are tackling unless we are not solving problems there is no sign of life so in essence i want to say that the problems are only for the living entities this we must howsoever make big thing may be there if there is no life in that thing there is no problem for that thing so first question is answered that problems to whom problems are only to the living entities this we must be clear so then the next question is what is the solution to a problem but in before that i like to formally define the concept of problem please look at the slide problem may be a state of mind of living being of not being satisfied with some situation however for our purpose we may take the unsatisfactory unacceptable undesirable situation itself is a, as a problem in the beginning i told you problem to whom 
And I mentioned the problems are only to the living entities. Now, even in the case of entities, we are not always having problems. Sometimes we are very happy, very much satisfied and all that. However, at other times we are uneasy and we feel that there is something which is missing. So, what is the problem? Problem is a state of mind in which a particular living entity doesn't feel satisfied with the prevailing situation and then we say this is a problem. However, when we are talking of problem in general, then in that case, as we know, the everybody's mental state is different from the others and in case we go to the mental state of each individual, we may not be able to find out the common ground and call what is a problem. Therefore, in general, when we are talking of the masses, problem may be something which is unsatisfactory, unacceptable, undesirable, etc. So this is what we mean by a problem, a situation which is not currently acceptable and hence under this condition when problem is a situation which is unacceptable then what is a solution? So the next slides tell us what is meant by a solution. Please look at the slide. One way of looking at a possible solution of a problem is a sequence of activities that if carried out allowed available tools leads us from the unsatisfactory position to an unacceptable unaccept satisfactory or desired position. Friends, what do we mean by solution? Solution means that if by using some available tools we are able to reach from the initially given un satisfactory position to a position which is satisfactory, then we may say it is a solution. For example, I need to see Redford. A child wants to see Redford living near Indira Gandhi National Open University. The child is very curious to see Redford. So it is a state of mind, it is a problem for the child, how to solve it, the various vehicles, various means which are available, using those means, if the child is able to reach Redford, then the problem, this particular problem of seeing the Redford is solved if by using some transport means the child is able to reach Redford. So, in general, whenever there is an unsatisfactory situation, we explore the various tools which are available with us. Using those tools, we reach a state where the situation becomes satisfactory. This process of taking us from the unsatisfactory situation to the satisfactory situation may be called a solution to the problem. So, for example, when we are interested in making a very tasty pudding. So what we should do? Initially, we may be given some ingredients, like the flour may be given, water may be given, some utensils may be given, etc. Please look, continue looking at the slide. The pudding is the desired state. So what is our problem? The problem is to have tasty pudding. And for that, there is an initial state. There must be a beginning position. And the beginning position in this particular case is that we have got sugar, we have got flour, we have got water, etc. And in addition, we also have use cooking gas, oven and some utensils. Friends, here it must be clear. Please continue looking at the slide. Here it must be clear that unless we are given sugar, we are given flour, we are given water, we are given utensils, we are given gas. We cannot solve the problem. For example, we don't have the gas. We can't solve the problem. Even if we have the gas, even if we have the sugar, water, everything available. But we don't have any utensil. In that case also the problem becomes unsolvable. So what I want to convey to you through these means is 
that first of all we have an initial situation and we have some tools which may take us from the initial unsatisfactory situation to the satisfactory situation if we don't have the tools or we don't have the initial position in which the sugar, water, flour, etc. are given. Then the problem may be unsolvable. You must remember this thing. We must have initially something to solve the problem. We must have some available tools also in order for some problem to be solvable. So in the case of tasty pudding, we already have sugar, we have water, we have got sugar, and in addition we have got some utensils and the cooking gas. And what is the solution? The solution is various steps it consist uh, uh, constitutes of putting, uh, lighting the gas, putting the utensil, warming, putting floor in it, uh, stirring it, etc., etc., and ultimately putting water, etc., as is the process. So this process which takes us from raw sugar, raw flour, raw water to the pu tasty pudding, this process itself may be called a solution in this particular case. I hope the idea of what is a problem, what is a solution, should be clear through this simple example. Please. Then next question arises. Even if we have a computer system, is it the computer alone which solves the problem? Well, friends, no. So far, the state of art, whatever is prevailing today, by that the computer systems cannot solve problems by themselves. At any stage, at some stage or other, some human being has embedded the proposed solution within the machine to a given problem. Only the computer system executes that solution proposed a solution. So then the question may be, why the computer system is used at all? The computer system is used for the purpose of or because of its speed. If the computer is very fast as compared to the human beings, for example, there, there are hundreds, thousands of trains running between pair of uh, railway stations. If we want to look for a particular destination, a train for a destination from our own town, if we go through the railway timetable, it may take hours and hours together. However, if we give a process to the computer system of searching the railway timetable, then it may execute in a fraction of a minute. So it is the speed of execution of the computer systems because of which we use the computers to solve our problems. But so far, the plan, the solution, the various steps which are to be taken by the computer system in solving the problems are given by the human beings. It must be very clear to all of us. And one more thing, at this point of time, I may tell you the steps at the very elementary level which computer takes are really very sort of idiotic one in the sense that if we are required to add 15 to 12, a human child may do it in a fraction of a second and may give the answer as 27. However, when the computer is asked to solve this problem through a method suggested by human beings, then it will first of all convert 15 to a binary number, say 1111. And 12 also it uh, converts into binary numbers, maybe 1100. And then at one time it adds the leftmost pair of zeros and ones first, rather rightmost pair of zeros and ones first, and then carry, etc., etc. And ultimately it gets a binary number which finally is converted to 27. So you can see that even the processes which are adopted by the computer system in solving a problem are too elementary for human beings, but still it is able to give the answer faster. It is in view of the fact of its speed. So this also must be understood by us. 
first of all I explain what is a problem, to whom there is a problem, what is a solution, and then who solves the solution, who finds out or who solves a particular problem under consideration. So these things must be very clear to us. Please, now look at the next slide, please. Next slide tells us, because computer science is our main topic, what is ultimately in this context computer science? Well, there are various, for example, we say mathematics is the study of numbers, it may be, the, it is also the study of special things, geometry, and it is study of order of entities. In the same sense, what is computer science at last? There are, there may be various ways of defining what is computer science. One of ways is, to define the computer science is, the study of solving problems from any domain of human experience using computer as a tool. That is, when we are allowed computer as the main tool and we are required to solve a problem, then that problem's solution falls under the domain of computer science. So briefly or roughly we can say that computer science is the study of solving problems in which computer is used as a tool. As I told you earlier also, <coughs> every discipline has its own methodology. For example, in physics generally we conduct experiments. From the experiments we may make a hypothesis, then we conduct further experiments. In the initial stages we were making only observations from the environment. Then we hypothesize, then we conduct some experiments to verify our hypothesis. And ultimately after a repetition of these things, recursive uh, process, we may come to a final sort of solution or theory or something like that or validity of a particular claim that is generally done in a science. In mathematics also we apply a number of principles like principle of mathematical induction, we make manipulation of symbols and all that. So what are, is the main methodology of computer science? The question arises as I enumerated or I discussed the methodology of a science or methodology of mathematics for solving problems, what is the methodology of computer science? So friends, by this time you must have, being MCA students, you must have known that the most important methodology of solving problems in computer science is algorithm. So next slide says something about this one, mainly algorithms, what is algorithm? A step-by-step -step method of solving problem using elementary operations like read, write, plus, minus, multiplication, etc. Please continue looking at the slide. What is an algorithm? Algorithm, of course, it says briefly and not so precisely. Step-by-step -step method of solving problems using elementary operations which are already built in the machine. What are those elementary operations which are built in the machine? Are read write, plus, minus, multiplication, division, etc., etc. So what is the main methodology of computer science? The main methodology of computer science is algorithm. What is an algorithm? Algorithm is nothing else but step-by-step -step method in which some of the inbuilt operations are used for solving the problem under consideration. It must be clear, this is the main methodology in computer science. Apart from this, there are other methodologies also, like artificial intelligence techniques are there, then neural network techniques are there, and other techniques are there. But so far, mainly algorithms, that be step-by-step -step solution methods, in which the inbuilt operations, elementary operations are used in solving problem is the main technique, main method in computer science which is used in solving problems. <coughs> Actually, some of the computer scientists like Horowitz and Sani and many others, most of the computer scientists agree to this definition that the whole of computer science which I defined in the beginning as a working definition that it may be the, taken as the study of solving problems with the help of computers. 
The computer scientists say it can be said in another way as the study of algorithms. Whole of computer science can be viewed as or in terms of only algorithms. Please look at the slide. Why the, it is so? You can see that Please look at the slide <coughs> that in the under architecture, please look at the slide, machines for executing, <coughs> well we study architecture and organization which is just building up machines, the hardware part generally, that can be thought of as that part which helps us in executing the algorithm. So machines are for executing algorithm. Then you study programming languages. The programming languages are used to express whatever solution we have in our minds or in English language. But because the computers are so far not very good in understanding the natural languages they require specific languages which are very precise, which are may be called as formal languages and it is very essential for us to express the solutions in those formal languages in order to use computer as a tool for solving the problems. So all the programming languages are nothing as but whatever solution you have in your mind or whatever solution you have on the paper in the in English language or Hindi language or in any other natural language that should be converted to a language, a, a expression which is understandable by the computer system and such expressions are given in terms of programming languages. So you, have, you can again see that even programming languages are nothing as but the languages which express algorithms. I am telling you the importance of algorithm that algorithm is the central concept of whole of computer science because even the programming languages are nothing else but means for expressing our solution in a way that computer system can understand and execute it. Then you have theoretical computer science. Theory of computation, etc., are studied, even design analysis of algorithms is studied. Now, what is the purpose of their, those disciplines? We say these algorithms because I said the algorithm is the central concept of computer science. So, how do you explain theory of computations or design and of analysis of algorithm in terms of algorithms? Well, design and analysis of algorithm is a whole about algorithms. But what about theoretical computer science? The theoretical computer science says the algorithmic approach has its own limitations. That is, algorithmic approach cannot solve all the problems which we may encounter in our everyday life. Rather, this theoretical computer science says only a small fraction of the problems which we may encounter can be solved through algorithmic means. However, it is very clear that theory of computer science is concerned nothing else but with the limits of algorithmic approach. So again it is around, it also revolves around the concept of algorithm. And finally as I mentioned design analysis of algorithm is a whole of nothing else but algorithm that you design an algorithm then you find out its efficiency etc etc and limitation. So you can see whole of computer science the way, so uh, visibly a number of various disciplines are there which don't seem to be related to algorithms but are ultimately related to algorithms that is algorithm may be taken as the central concept of computer science. I hope it is very convincing that way. Now significance of algorithm. Friends, though I have said a number of things about algorithms, why don't we ha have a look at what the leading computer scientists say about the importance of algorithms in computer science. Please look at the next slide. Next slide says, two ideas lie gleaming on the jeweler's velvet. The first is calculus and the second is algorithm. 
the calculus and the rich body of mathematical analysis to which it gives rise made modern science possible. But it has been the algorithm that has made the possible the modern world. Uh, David Berlinsky is one of the leading computer scientists and, uh, in the field of algorithms. And it is his opinion. He says that whatever is modern science possible, you may not look at the slide, please. Uh, he says that the modern science has been feasible because of the calculus. However, the modern life in which we are communicating at our will, uh, we are able to download material, etc. You need not look at the slide, please. Uh, all these things are possible only because of algorithms. So the algorithm is not just a theoretical concept. It is a very practical concept, rather in whatever you are doing today, wherever you are using any communication or any computing machine, algorithm is embedded inside it. Without algorithms, nothing, a computer is just a bundle of hardware which is not capable of doing anything. So you can see the modern life has been contributed, attributed to by Berlinsky to nothing else but algorithms. Next slide also uh, also gives us a very important uh, person's meaning. It has often been said, a person does not really understand something until after teaching. It is a very common saying that if you teach a topic to somebody, then you really understand. But in the modern times it has been modified. And the modified is that if you can teach a computer, not a person, then you really understand that. What is the significance of this? The significance of this is that in order to teach a computer system, we have to think in terms of more fundamental concepts as compared to in teaching a human being. Because the basic capabilities of a computer system are much less than the capabilities of a three-year-old child. Therefore, when you are explaining something to a computer system, you have to deal in terms of more fundamental concepts as compared to the concepts which you use in explaining something to a three-year-old child. And if you are able to do so, that is, if you are able to do express the things in terms of much more fundamental concepts, definitely you understand it. So, getting a solution out of the computer system, you will have to understand the problem under consideration and its solution path. Try to understand solution and solution path are two different things. Solution path is algorithm. Algorithm by itself doesn't solve a problem. What I mean to say by this, try to understand. If we have quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c is equal to zero, we have to find out the roots of this equation. Now the solution path says that x1 is equal to minus b plus minus under the root b, uh, four, b square minus 4ac divided by 2a, etc. Now this is the solution path for which first of all we calculate b square minus 4ac, then we take the square root, then we add or subtract from minus b, then we divide by 2a. However, if a, b, c are very, very large number having thousands of digits, it is very difficult for a human being to carry out even these three steps of b square minus 4ac computing and then subtracting it from minus b and then dividing it by 2a. In this part, the computer system is very good. However, the computer system cannot figure out that first of all it should take b square minus 4ac. This has to be told by some human being at some stage. Similarly, the next step that now whatever number you have obtained, you uh, add or subtract from minus b. This has to be told by a human being. And the next step to be, uh, whatever result you have obtained so far, divide it by 2a. This cannot be figured out by the computer system on its own if it is asked to find out the, square, uh, uh, the roots of ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0. These various steps have been embedded in the machine by the human beings. However, once these steps are embedded in the machine and ABC are given as very, very large numbers, then computer is much better than the human beings. So it is the human-machine combination which solves the problem. And each has its own role. The human being has the role in terms of giving, suggesting a solution, steps. 
or sequence. Whereas once a sequence is given to the computer system, it executes those, that sequence of steps very easily and very fast. I hope you understand all these things. Anyway, now, in computer science, what do we mean by solvability of a problem? Friends, solvability of a problem means solution through algorithms. What we mean by this is that the problems may be solution, may be solvable by just intuition. It may be solved just by tossing a coin. But this type of solutions are not taken as solutions by computer systems. Whenever we say it is solvable by computer, it only means that there must ex exist an algorithm which can be executed by the machine to get a solution. In this context, very interesting things may be said that actually in 1930, between 1930 and 1940, a number of very important results were established in context of the capability, the limitations of a computer system, whereas at that time there was no electronic stored program computer concept at present, uh, was not there at all. But all the results about the limitations and capabilities of a computer system were proved theoretically, that is, using mathematical means. It was proved during 1930 and 1940. And what was proved during 1930 and 1940 can be summarized as follows. First of all, a very, very small fraction of the problems which we may encounter in everyday life can be solved by the help of computers, that is, through algorithmic means. And number two, out of those solutions, those problems for which a theoretical solution is available, theoretical solution, out of those theoretical solutions, only a few of those will be practical solutions. That is those which can be executed in limited amount of time so that the solution can be really useful. So these results were proved between 1930 and 1940. And whenever we mean to say a solution by a computer system, it only means that it is through means of algorithm. Please look at the slide. As I mentioned, the slide only repeats what I've said. That is, the computer can solve only a very, very small fraction of the problems which we encounter in every day. And these results were proved during 1930s. And some of the leading computer scientists of that time were Turing, Church, Post, and etc. They used various mathematical means to prove that the computer cannot solve every problem. For example, a very simple problem which you can understand, that if you are given a program arbitrarily, intended to be a, solu intended to be a solution, not necessarily actual solution of a problem. Now, whether the computer will actually stop on that particular algorithm, uh, on that suggested solution or not. It cannot be predicted. Actually, the result at that time was given in terms of Turing machine. I will not like to discuss at present Turing machine. We may discuss Turing machine sometimes later on. But in general, you can say if there is a computer system and if you are given a sequence of string of uh, uh, letters which expresses an intended solution, then it is not necessarily available in advance, whether the computer will be stopping it or not. It is called very famous halting problem is there. It is something like this. If somebody says, I am telling lies, can we tell whether the person is actually telling lies or not? Because if the person is telling lies, then whatever statement he or she is making is wrong. And the statement made by the person is, I am telling lies. So it should be wrong. And what is meant by this that the I am telling lies is wrong is that I am telling truth. However, if we assume that the statement I am telling lies is true, 
then this statement cannot be true because he, he, the person is making uh, lies. So these are some very simple problems which are actually called self-referential problems or all that. In which what to talk of computers, even human beings sometimes are stuck. So similar are the situation, uh, the limitations of the computer sometimes are much more. I have told you a number of times repeatedly, it is the power of execution which is more important because of which the computer systems are used. It is not the thinking power for the time being at least. The computers of the present day may not have the capabilities even of five year old child, but its execution speed is much more than we human beings can imagine at all. So with this explanation, now the next question arises, how we solve problems? The very first step in solving a problem, whether by human beings or by computer systems is to define the problem under consideration. What do we mean by definition of a problem? Please look at the slide. The slide says that a problem is said to be definable if we are given what is the initial state what we are given in the beginning. <coughs> As in the case of tasty pudding, I said that we are given sugar, we are given flour, we are given water, we are given utensils, we are given cooking gas. If any of these things is not given, then the problem of solving the, of the having tasty pudding cannot be solved. So, a problem is definable if we know what initially the gradients are available with us. In the case of the problem of pudding, we have sugar, we have water, we have got flour. Then what is next? What are the available tools? This is very important. In case we want to solve a problem, we must have some available tools, whether those are mental tools, whether those are physical tools. So, what are the physical tools available here? In the case of pudding, we must have gas, we must have utensils. What are the mental tools we must have? The process by which from the flour, water and sugar, we are able to go to the tasty pudding. Those are our mental tools. Then what are the expected outputs? In the case of pudding problem, it is the pudding which is the output and the relevant environmental conditions. This is also very important. For example, if we, there is the building is already f on fire, then the having the pudding is out of question or maybe very difficult at all. That is the environmental conditions, what is prevailing outside the given inputs, given tools, and given other things and desired outputs, there is an environment in which we are working. If all these four are known to us, then we say the problem is defined. In the case of finding out the roots of a quadratic equation, we are given ax square plus bx plus c is equal to zero. What are our mental assets here? The mental tools are the algorithm of finding out the roots, that is, we get the various steps, first compute b square minus 4ac, then find out the square root, then add to it to minus b, etc., and dividing by 2a. These are the mental tools. And what are the physical tools? We may have a pen and paper or something like that, or we may have a calculator, and like that. So, and what is the desired output? Ultimately, the two square roots of the quadratic equation, which may be equal, may be imaginary, etc., etc. So, in order that a problem is defined, before we go for solution of a problem, when we are unsatisfied with the situation, first we try to define the problem. That is what we do. We tell what are the inputs, what are the given tools, and what is the desired output. This is first very important step in solving any problem, whether it is to be solved by a human being or by a machine. And once we have defined the problem, then we go in for the solution of the problems. Friends, as in the very beginning I mentioned, 
that there are various type of problems. It is not easy. As I mentioned earlier also, that even for the computer systems, there will be large, large number of problems which will never be solvable by the help of even the computers. So from that point of view, we divide the set of all problems in terms of their difficulty vis-a-vis finding out the solution of the problem under consideration. This is called classification of the problems. So, from this point of view, that is from the point of view of solving problems with the help of computers, we divide the set of problems which we may encounter into five categories. So, please look at the slide. Some of the problems may not be even recognizable. <coughs> and what to talk of define the problem or what to talk of solving the problem? Even we are not able to recognize the problem at a particular point of time, only we say something is wrong, but we don't know what is wrong. And in such a situation, what to talk of solving the problem, we are not able to know what is the exactly problem. So this is the first category. And under this category, you know that when the car was produced, nobody knew that after 200 years it will be creating congestion, pollution and a lot of problems like that. So these are some of the problems which cannot be even properly recognized. And the second category is that of, that of course we can recognize the problem, but we are not able to define. That is, we are not able to tell exactly what are the inputs, what are the available tools, and what is the possible outcome. So this is the second category of problems which we may encounter and under this problem, you can see why the economy is not doing well. Why the economy is not doing well? Of course, we recognize the problem because the economy is not doing well. But why the economy is not doing well is not definable in the sense we don't know the initial position. If we go into the various factors, this may have historical consequences also because of the thousands of years of history behind the economy of a particular country or a particular place. So in this particular case, we cannot definitely tell what are the initial state. And when we'll say that the economy will, is doing very well, that is the output also is not properly definable. And then how to make the economy good? What are the available tools? We don't know exactly. So in this particular case, when the problem under consideration is that why the economy is not doing well, we are able to recognize the problem, but we are not able to define the problem. We are not able to tell what is the initial position, what is the final position, what are the available tools. So friends, with this categorization of the problems under consideration, we'll continue in the second lecture because it is very important for computer science students to categorize the problems first of all. It, is, it should not be like that once a problem is given, just you start with your computer systems and try to solve it. No, it should not be like that because not every problem is solvable with the help of computers. We will continue the discussion in the second half. Thank you.